So, something I've been wanting to talk about for a while when it comes to Breath of the Wild speedrunning was the topic of skipping the Great Plateau. First off, I will straight off say that I will not go into the details of why it is currently not possible, because there already is a great video made by Gymnast in which he explains really well why that is the case. However, if we were to briefly sum it up in a phrase, it would be, if you go outside the plateau, you void out. However, I most definitely would recommend pausing this video and watching that one since it helps getting a more in-depth understanding for those of you who might not be aware. The link is in the description below. Due to all this, it is sometimes considered that the Great Plateau skip is similar to the famous barrier skip from Wind Waker, and I can definitely see why. On the surface, it seems like having not to do the shrines and going straight to Ganon would be a huge time save. Whether this is true or not, we can only theorize, which is what I intended on doing right now. So, today, I just want to investigate that theoretical possibility where plateau skip is a thing, to have an idea of what that could be like, what the route could potentially look like for an any person speedrun, because that's where I am more knowledgeable at. So, before we dive in, let's put some assumptions up on the table. 1. The trick would happen before any of the shrines are done. So basically within the first 5 minutes of the run. I mean, otherwise, how much time do you really save if the only thing you skip is the old man concede, for example? Okay, to be honest, that would actually be a pretty good time save. Then, number 2. The current knowledge of Breath of the Wild that we have, it seems that the barrier around the Great Plateau disappears when the player receives the paraglider, which means we will assume that this Great Plateau skip theoretical trick would involve somehow getting the paraglider within those aforementioned 5 minutes, without doing any of the shrines. Ultimately, this means that the paraglider is a tool that could be used in this theoretical new route. Now that we have that out of the way, well, it's time to theorize. Okay, so the run starts off how a normal, current any person run in Breath of the Wild would start. Link wakes up from the Shrine of Resurrection and picks up the Sheikah Slate. Nothing abnormal about that, it's all good. He then clips out of the shrine, just as expected, and goes out. Now, we have a few things to consider for the route, such as the fact that the fastest way to travel to Hyrule Castle is a bullet time bounce, which requires a shield, a bow, and arrows, as well as a paraglider. Now, where do you get those items? Go and grab an axe, and then the pot lid, just as you do in a normal run. The next question, though, is regarding the bow and arrows. Since we want to be as fast as possible, we don't want to do a large detour, and it looks like the best arrows we can get is by going to Temple of Time and break that pot which usually contains 5 arrows. Once that's done, all you would have to do is perform whatever dark ritual would need to be done in order to get Paraglider early and remove the plateau's barrier. Get on top of the Temple of Time, open the chest to get the desired bow, and then perform a bullet time bounce to Harrow Castle. Phew! Well. Seems easy, right? Well, if we think a bit further, let's think of the fights. You're gonna need weapons, and not bad ones in that. So let's imagine for a minute. You reach Hyrule Castle with the help of a bullet time bounce, as expected. You break the crate with your axe and hopefully get a banana, as expected. You then climb up to Dining Hall, as expected, and if you follow the current route, you'd immediately realize something. Firstly, you need to get that royal bow. But unfortunately, it's at the top of this chandelier, and you're only supposed to grab it through Magnesis. So, yeah. Since you don't have any runes, you can grab that bow. That's already one weapon impossible to pick up. Okay, fine, you move on. You pick up the second banana and then face the royal guard spear, which you likewise cannot pick up. Magnesis is not to the rescue here. Fine, two weapons you can't pick up here. So let's advance and get the royal guard sword at. Oops! Looks like you need bombs to open up that wall in order to get it. I suppose you get the point. If we're gonna go through Hyrule Castle without the runes, this will require some rerouting. It's already easy here to see how this could put quite the time loss around here. At first glance, we can already see some solutions, such as maybe instead of landing here after the BTB, we could attempt to land over there and get a royal bow. And while it may seem interesting at first since we can get not just a bow but a pack of normal arrows as well as a chest with some sweet and shit arrows, the problem is that you cannot really go inside the castle since you are supposed to destroy that malice wall from the inside. You can also grab a royal guard spear from this chest if you climb this part of Hyrule Castle. And as you may see, it is technically possible to get weapons, but it's gonna take a lot of running around Hyrule Castle in order to collect an arsenal that is even remotely similar to the one we can have with all the runes. In which case, it's all centralized in one area of the castle. 
in that route. At best, doing some clipping shenanigans could be a way to save some traversal time, but nonetheless, it looks like doing all of that in the first place could be quite a time loss. Even with an optimal routing, you might even need to go back to the crate for the banana RNG anyways. So yeah. As a reminder, on the world record pace, the grid plateau can be completed in around 15 minutes, and as far as it is looking like, the time you gain on the Great Plateau would likely be lost in the castle and would end up quite complicated. And all of this, all of what I've just discussed right now, doesn't even count the final fight, for instance with Fireblight second phase usually demanding the bomb rune to be used. Fortunately, you can use bomb arrows instead, which can be picked up at multiple locations, which also work, but likewise it doesn't really seem to change the situation much. And now I am fully expecting a good speed router and map of the wild to come by and destroy me in the comments telling of an obvious manner to solve all of this issue and having a good route in Harrow Castle despite the lack of runes. I'm waiting for it. Most definitely waiting for it. I think the best way to sum it up is that while it most certainly is possible to still finish a run without using the runes, if one were to do a theoretical great path to skip by summoning the ancient demons of Hyrule, we cannot really be entirely sure whether there will be a large amount of time save. Probably because I just suck at routing, I suppose. In any case, as much as I rambled about in this video, at the end of the day, with current knowledge of the game, skipping the Great Plateau is not possible. And in this entire video, where I imagined what the run would look like, I assumed that the way it would work would be through somehow getting the paraglider early, since the barrier around the plateau seems to be tied to that. However, for all we know, we could be all wrong and it could be a more complex set of flags that need to be passed in order for it to work, which would completely change the way this video would have gone. But hey, I dare say, this is the fun of it. Even if the Great Plateau skip does become a thing one day, chances are it's gonna look a whole lot different than how I imagined here, though I still think it's unlikely right now. Until then, while I do my indie person runs, I will stick to jumping all around the plateau and beat the shrines. But hey, maybe, one day, one day.